Welcome to what is now week seven of Upon Further Review, our weekly Butler County High School football show. We are sponsored, as we are every week, by Troy Allen, Chevrolet Buick GMC, uh, the Butler Health System, and Conlon Tarker. Um, and my name is John Henrietto. I am the sports editor of the Butler Eagle, joined as I am every week by Derek Pita, sports writer Derek Pita, and sports writer Mike Kilroy, who just flashed a uh, a mini me of himself moments ago. Um, and here's Emma. And there's little Emma right there, sound asleep. Sound one asleep. Of, one She's going to sleep through the show like most of our viewers. One of our more loyal viewers, yes. And, uh, of course, I, I will be the host for this week's show. So we will jump right in on here looking at last week. Uh, Mike, we'll start with you and looking at last week. A lot of in, intriguing things happened last week in high school football. What, what strikes you the most when you take a glance back? Well, uh, Scott Heinauer winning his uh, 200th game, I'm sure, uh, at Mars. I'm sure Derek's going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, also, you know, Union Ace Valley keeps rolling. But uh, Butler, yeah, you have to talk about Butler getting their first win and, what, 24-game losing streak. Yep. Good for them. Uh, they rolled over, over Blackhawk. Um, I know that was a relief for that program, a relief for uh, Coach Christie to kind of get that monkey off his back. Now they're looking for maybe a, a two-game winning streak this week when they play Slippery Rock. So, uh, so kudos to Butler. Yeah, I have to, I'll, since you mentioned Butler, I'll, I'll just I'll just follow right along with that. It's one of the two games that, that I was going to mention as well. Butler getting an overwhelming 55-14 to 14 win over Blackhawk last week, as you mentioned, Mike, and uh, – um, and uh, and Cooper Baxter did a really unique thing. Butler's quarterback did a different thing in that game. He was involved in in touchdowns four different ways. He returned an interception for a score, returned a fumble for a score, uh, rushed for two touchdowns, and and also threw a touchdown pass. I'm sure something like that's been done before at some level, but it has to be pretty rare when a football player can figure in four touchdowns four different ways like that in the same game. And the other one I wanted to mention was. Um, Game that I covered on uh, on on Saturday, the the Seneca Valley game, uh, Seneca Valley winning, beating at Baldwin in overtime, nineteen to sixteen. Uh, defense was was big. Mike keeps his zoning out on us here, but we'll see if he comes back. <laughs> there he is. Oh, he's back. Uh, Seneca Valley nine quarterback sacks in in that game. And, and Derek, I know you cover Seneca on a regular basis, but their their defense, particularly Josh Miller, I think was in on four or five of those sacks in that overtime victory. Uh, so a key win for Seneca in, in terms of the uh, playoff chase. So, Derek, what are, what are your thoughts looking back on last week's action? Well, I'm going to start with the game I covered, uh, the Burrow at Freeport game. Uh, you know, Ben Lane's first start at quarterback. He was a running back that switched to quarterback um, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago against Derry. He passed for over 200 yards, but he also rushed for over 100. This past week against Burrow, Burrow completely sold out against the run completely shut down Freeport's running attack. I think I think Lane ended up with like 10 yards rushing in the game, and yet he still threw for over 200 yards and uh, and two touchdowns. So when you when you have uh, an offense that is basically one-dimensional like that, that you would think that that would make it easier for the other team to stop you, and Freeport proved that in some cases that's not the case. Uh, he still threw the ball uh, into some tight windows too. So this kid's a running back playing quarterback, but I'm telling you he can make he can make the tough throws. And he did that against Burrow. And obviously, Mike mentioned uh, Scott Heinauer. Uh, you know, just incredible consistency. I look at, you know, some in some programs, you make the playoffs, and it's, it's the reason to have a parade through downtown. Mars is going to be in the playoffs this year for the 16th straight season. That, that's a, just incredible uh, consistency. And the fact that he's gotten 200 wins at, at one school uh, just speaks volumes about uh, him, his coaching staff, and the kind of athletes that come through that program. You know, our regular season is uh, winding down, especially in the uh, WPL. Their final week is this coming Friday, their final regular season week. So I thought I'd pose this question to you guys, and I'm excluding uh, Teddy Ruffner from this question, the outstanding Warriors running back who is walking away quite literally with our Eagle scoring trophy this this season, defending that title from last year. But other than Teddy Ruffner, and Derek, I'll start with you here. As this regular season winds down, who would be your pick right now for Butler County area high school football MVP and coach of the year? Let's, let's hear your choices here. Uh, I got to I gotta go with uh, Joey Prentice, the quarterback at North Catholic. I mean, they played six games this year, and he has 25 touchdowns, um, 11 rushing and 14 through the air, over 1,000 yards passing. Uh, he's getting close to 500 yards rushing. 
And you think about the, the, the shoes he had to step into. Zach Rocco left pretty big ones when he graduated this past spring. And uh, for, for Joey to step in and, and not only play well, but play lights out. I mean, uh, North Calf is rolling right now, and he's a big reason uh, why they're not just winning games, but winning big. And uh, he's having just an incredible season. Um, and Coach of the Year, uh, we have a lot of great candidates out there. North Catholic's Patrick O'Shea is having a great year, obviously. But to me, this is clear cut. I got to go with Brad Dittman up at Union AC Valley. Uh, yeah, they're a Class A school, and they're also they're obviously playing other Class A schools. But as I mentioned on our show a few weeks ago, I covered the Red Bank game a few weeks ago against Union AC. Red Bank's a Class A a Class A program, and they dress 35, 40 kids. Union AC is dressing 20. Um, and when you have that uh, sm small roster size, you have to make sure you absolutely get everything that you can out of each and every player. And obviously you have to make sure that they're in the right position uh, to make plays. And, you know, one injury could to, to another team might not be a big deal. One injury to a team that's dressing 20 kids per, per game is, is huge. It can have a domino effect. It can kind of derail your season. And the fact that he's been able to kind of wade through uh, some injuries, they've had some injuries and here they are sitting just one loss and their only loss is, to a, an undefeated Red Bank team by three points. That's pretty incredible. So I got to go with Brad Dick. Okay, Mikey, your thoughts. Uh, Butler County area football most valuable player to this point as well as coach of the year. Who do you got? Pretty much everything that Derek said was what I was going to say. But uh, so I'll zig a little bit. Uh, ben Lane might be uh, entering this conversation as, uh, as MVP since moving the quarterback. I know they've only played really, what, two games with him at, at quarterback, but he's made a huge impact there uh, for Freeport uh, in such a short period of time. Uh, Brad Dittman, I don't, I don't know if you can argue with it. anybody else as, as coach of the year. What he's done there at Union AC Valley is incredible. Small roster size doesn't matter. They're, they're playing well. They're, they're winning games. Uh, they might be uh, a, a team to be reckoned with here in, in, in the postseason. So, uh, but that being said, I think Joey Prentice and the non Teddy Ruffner division is probably the MVP uh, right now. I'm taking a different tact here on, on both of these. Uh, all due respect to Joey Prentice. And as you guys mentioned, he's done a fantastic job at North Catholic. But if you remember in, in preseason, there was a quarterback battle at North Catholic. And uh, Carson Coney was in that fight with, with Joey Prentice. Prentice won the job. He's, he's been outstanding ever since. But I really believe that if Laconi was also playing quarterback, maybe they wouldn't be having quite the number they put up. I still think they'd be a dominant team. Uh, my MVP, Mike, you touched on him. I'm going to go with Ben Lane. Uh, I think since they moved him that the quarterback on Freeport, he's ignited their offense. Their offense has exploded. They've scored over 30 points in both his starts. He's been outstanding running and throwing a football. And uh, the, being only a sophomore, and, and, yeah, it's only been two games. But I'm not sure where, where Freeport would be right now if Ben Lane wasn't that quarterback for them. So I'm going to – so I'm going in that direction. My coach of the year, I am going to go to North Catholic, and I am going to go with Patrick O'Shea for, for a couple of reasons. Um, the first is he, he, settled, he, he settled that program down. Derek, you remember a couple of years back, they were going through coaches. They had some, some, some turmoil there, some off-the-field problems. And he, he's come in there. He's he stabilized the program. He's established discipline. They're, they're blowing out virtually every, every team they play, and, and I think he's done a fantastic job. And, again, I agree with you guys. Totally on Brad Dittman, Fan, fantastic job. But I'm going to go with Patrick O'Shea of North Catholic for, for my coach of the year as of now. And staying with North Catholic, because they are part of my over-under question for you guys this week, um, Freeport travels – well, Freeport plays the Trojans this year. The game, of course, is at Morris High School. But uh, I just mentioned that Ben Lane has impacted Freeport's offense. They've scored over 30 points both games – with them at quarterback, we all know the kind of offense and, and point production that North Catholic's been putting up. So, Michael, start with you here. My over-under for total points scored in, in this Friday's Freeport-North Catholic game, a game that you'll be covering, by the way, uh, my over-under is at 60.5. Do you go over or do you go under? Well, I'm excited about covering this game. Uh, I've been trying to get a North Catholic game all year because I want to see the Joey Prentice and that and that offense work. And now I get a bonus. I get to see Ben Lane and that yeah. Freeport offense work. 16 and a half points, so that's a lot of points. It is. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to go a little bit under there. I think it's going to be a close, competitive game. Uh, this might be the first really big test Freeport or uh, 
North Catholic has has faced here this season. Remember last year, Freeport took North Catholic uh, uh, to the brink. Uh, really, they had them where, where they wanted them. North Catholic was able to pull one out. So uh, this is going to be a heck of a game, but I'm going to go a little bit under 16 and a half. All right, Derek, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll make our picks uh, later on, so I'm not asking you for a final score here, but over under 60 and a half points, Freeport, North Catholic. You know how I hate to agree with Mike, but I'm going to have to do it here. <laughs> um, North Catholic's been putting up 50-plus points, I mean, pretty much every week, except for their win over East Allegheny a while back. I think they scored 35 in that one. They've been putting up 50-plus points per week consistently. I don't think that happens this week, and I also don't think that Freeport's offense – uh, which has been, which has looked really good with Ben Lane at quarterback. I don't think they're going to be putting up 30 plus points in, in on their side either. So, I think it's basically going to be the toughest test uh, for Freeport's offense facing North Catholic's defense that they faced this year. And I also think it's going to be the toughest test that North Catholic's offense, which is high powered, they can run, they can pass. This is going to be their toughest test this year. So I see both teams scoring well below what they they've been averaging. So I'm going to go under here. I'm going to agree with Mike. I'm just not on the same same page with you guys this week. Uh, I I think Mike, I think you're in for the, I think you're in for, for a real shootout here. I th- I see this game going up and down the field, both sides, and uh, so I'm going not not way over, but I'm going slightly over. I think this this game is going to be a very uh, high scoring affair. So whatever, before we get on, whatever, yeah, whatever, I know. Before we get into our pick segment here, let's uh, Derek, you wanted me to throw it to you and give kind of an update on how how Scoop is doing, how the three of us are doing so far. So what do you got for us here? Well, first of all, the coveted perfect week, the first one of the year and possibly the only one of the season goes to John. He went nine and zero last week. All right. So congrats, John. You are leading the way at, uh, what, what is your record now? 40 and 13. You are. She's back to 40 and 13 record. Uh, and, and me, Mike and scoop, each of us went eight and one. The only game we lost was the Butler Blackhawk game. So we all picked Blackhawks. Yep. Uh, John, you're leading the way, so we'll see how things turn out this week. Take it. So, what are your guys? What are yours? Yours, Mike's and Scoop's record over on it. I'll tell you what. La 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 la. You know, uh, <laughs> we don't John, need to you're, know that. You're 40 and 13. I'm right. 38 and 15. Mike and Scoop are both 36 and 17. What? Okay. No, no, it can't be right. It's fake news. <laughs> fake news. Fake news. <laughs> fake news. Okay. Emma, Emma's eight and no. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Emma is totally bored with this entire conversation, so we'll just move on. Okay, let's get into our picks. Uh, some interesting matchups, to say the least, this week. And we'll start off with one at Art Bernardi Stadium up in Butler, Slipper Rock, in the playoff bound Slipper Rock Rockets. Uh, two and four record coming to play Butler, one and four, as Mike mentioned earlier, just snapped the 24 game losing streak last Friday in rather dominating fashion over Black Hawk. Uh, Mike, you, you, you uh, cover Slipper Rock quite a bit. What are your thoughts on the Slipper Rock Butler matchup? Well, Slipper Rock's been playing a lot better here the last few weeks. They, they beat Grove City. They played Hickory, who beat them 45 nothing a few weeks ago. They played them tough. This game was a one-score game midway through the second quarter. A couple of turnovers kind of turned that into a 28-7 to win for, for Hickory. So, Slipper Rock's playing better. But I just don't know if Slipper Rock can uh, – they've had trouble with, with good athletic quarterbacks all year. I don't know if they can really contain uh, Cooper Baxter. I think that's going to be the difference. I think Cooper Baxter is going to have a big night. I think Butler's going to – going to win this one uh uh but i think it's gonna be a great entertaining game uh if you need a score yeah you want to score, yep, need a score. Yeah. uh i'm gonna say uh, uh 28 to 14 butler all right derek what do you think rockets golden tornado now first time ever by the way the two teams are meeting each other that's cool um i i said last week that i, I just find it hard to pick butler before they actually go out and win a game. Well, last week they went out and they just didn't just win, but they won by, what was it, John, 41 points. So yep. um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Butler in this one. I think it's going to be a good game, a close game, but I think Butler wins two in a row for the first time in a long time. I got the, the Golden Tornado winning 31-21. Yeah, I think uh, anytime you have two Butler County schools playing each other, especially when they've never met before, and – and you read about the Eagle this week. I'll be writing about some of the some of the uh, interesting uh, issues involving this game. Uh, Eli Christie, for example, is the Ciprox's uh, defensive coordinator. He's also the brother of uh, Eric Christie, Butler's head coach. Uh, you just have some. This is this is going to be a scrap. I mean, Larry Wander, Ciprox's coach, has told me uh, 
uh, last night. They're they're coming here. They're playing away. They're not looking at this as a playoff tune-up or anything like that. They want to win this game. I think they're going to give Butler all they want. I do think Butler wins. Uh, I'm going 21 to 14. Should Butler win, by the way, it would be their first back-to-back win since 2012 when one of Mike's favorites, Clyde Conti, was the coach of the the Golden Tornado. Coach Conti, yep. legend. All right, all right, Derek, we'll go with you on this next game. Mount Lebanon coming in the Seneca Valley. Mount Lebanon is 3-2. and two. Seneca is 4-1. and one. As I mentioned, uh, a gritty, old-fashioned defensive slugfest uh, with, with Baldwin last week. Seneca Valley winning in overtime on Saturday. Mount Lebanon 3-2. and two. Who do you like? This game's tough for me because I know how well Seneca Valley's defense played on, on Saturday. And I look at Mount Lebanon earlier in the year, uh, actually their first game of the year, they lost to Cannon Mac, which is a good team. But that result kind of surprised me. A couple weeks later, they lost to North Allegheny, but by only three points. You lose to NA by three points. There's obviously no shame in that. And just a couple weeks ago, they beat they beat Central Catholic, and last week they crushed Norwin, which uh, people probably expected. Um, I think Seneca Valley's defense is going to be able to keep this game low scoring, uh, which is what they need to do since they have a couple of their big starters out: um, Dustin Horn at quarterback and Ethan West at at running back. They need this to be a low scoring game to have a chance to win. Their defense keeps this game uh, within reach, but I, I just, I think Seneca Valley's offense just doesn't have enough firepower. I like Mount Lebanon to win this game 20 to 13. Wow. You actually stole my final score. Even I also picked Mount Lebanon 20 to 13. And, and I, I agree with your line of thinking there. I think this is a week where the injuries on offense catch up the Seneca Valley. I'm not, Mount Lebanon's, uh, I'm not going to call them a juggernaut, but but this is a very strong team. As Derek touched on, they've, they've scored a lot of points against some some pretty good opponents and only losing up in a by, by, by field goal. So I'm picking, uh, as I mentioned, Mount Lebanon also 20 to 13. Mike, what's your choice here? Well, I'm going to make this a, a clean sweep. Uh, I think Seneca Valley's offense has just had too many injuries. It's too hard for them to replace some of the guys that got hurt. You saw last week, they, they won on defense and special teams. They wouldn't have won that game if they didn't get that big kickoff return and that defense didn't play well. Seneca's defense is going to play well again. Like I said, I'm going to go with a clean sweep, though. I'm going to pick Mount Lebo 20-13. to 13. So, so, so we have, a, we have, a, we'll have okay. a clean sweep 20-13 across the board. I think it's going to be a, another slobber knocker, though. All right, slobber knocker. I haven't heard. heard yeah, I know. We had to get that well. slobber yeah. knocker yeah. in. Okay, knock Knights. They're 0-6. It's their last chance to get to put one in the uh, W column, but it's not going to be easy. They travel to Hampton, the Talbots, with a four in two record. Mike, we'll start with you on this one. Uh, cannot get or not? I'm not going to say can because we'll get into the Derek answer. <laughs> Does not get their first win of the year at Hampton on Friday. Unfortunately, no. I think they're going to play inspired though because it is their last game, and they desperately don't want to avoid a, a no for season. But uh, Hampton's just too too talented. Uh, Knox just one of those seasons where nothing went right for Knox. Injuries, uh, bad breaks here and there. Uh, they're going to unfortunately they're going to lose. Uh, but like I said, I think they're going to play inspired. Uh, I think they're going to lay it all on the line. This is their Super Bowl. This is their football playoffs. So I think they're going to go all out in this one. But I think Hampton's going to have a little bit too much. I think Hampton's going to win 30 to thirty to 14. Derek, Knights versus Talbots, what's your call? You know, what, what really has impressed me about Hampton, and obviously I have not covered them this year, but I have seen their scores, is it looks like they've got a really stout defense. And I'm sure they've got playmakers on offense too, but that, that defense, looking at some of their scores of their games this year, um, you know, Knox offense is struggling to begin with, and now you're going up against a team with a, a really good defense, and that's not a good combination. Uh, the game's at Hampton. I don't know what kind of crowds they're getting down there for whatever that's worth, but um, I like Hampton to to close the regular season with a win, 29 to seven over Knox. Yeah, the, yeah, that that Hampton defense you just mentioned, they they held Plum to 20 points, and that that that's doing something. And uh, Plum beat them 20 to seven, but the hold that Plum offense to 20 points this year is pretty impressive, and. They rolled up 42 of themselves against Indiana. Uh, they rolled up 42 on Greensburg Salem. Uh, close win over Highlands. Uh, this Hampton team's pretty good, and I think, as Mike mentioned, just has not been Knox year. Just too many things have gone wrong. I think they're going to fall short, but I think they'll 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 scrap. I think they'll be in the game in the second half. But I see Hampton winning 27 to 14. Sweep for Jacques. Yep. Sweet for Jacques. You want to give us one on uh, virtual here? No, I can't. No, do no, that. no, don't want to give us one. All right, all right. Uh, we got the Morris Planets, five and one, coming off in a in, in a 
a milestone victory you'd, you'd have to call. We mentioned Scott Heinauer's 20th win. We'll also be addressing that here a little bit later in the program. And uh, Teddy Ruffin going over 4,000 career rushing yards. The plan is to take that strong running game up to Indiana to, to take on the little Indians who are two and four. Derek, we'll start with you. More that Indiana do the – will the little Indians – not can – will the little Indians pull off the upset? Like, Mars has a chance to enter the playoffs on a four-game winning streak if they can win this week. Indiana is actually a place that Mars has gone up to before and lost games that most people thought they would win. I don't think it happens this time. Um, Indiana is good enough to beat weaker teams, but going up against a Mars team with, with that offensive line, uh, a good defense, and obviously Teddy Ruffner running the ball, um, I don't give the Indians much chance to, to stay in this game. I'm picking Mars 34-12. Mike, what do you think? Mars, Indiana. Yeah, Mars isn't going to get upset this week. Uh, they're they're, they're going to ride Teddy Ruffner again. They've been riding him all year. Uh, I think Teddy Ruffner is going to have another big game. He, he's just uh, he's just making a mockery of our story. Uh, <laughs> yes, he trophy is. run right now. He's doubled. He's more than doubled up everybody else. So uh, it's amazing what he's been able to do. I know. I know. Scott Heiner is trying to limit maybe his touches a little bit for the playoffs, but how can you when you have a horse like that? You have to let him run. So yep. uh, Mars is going to let him run. Mars is going to roll in this one. I say 35 to 35 13. Mars won. I would agree. One thing the, the little Indians haven't given up points. They gave up 42, as I mentioned last week to Hampton. Uh, the Highlands, they, they lost the Highlands 48 to 14. Uh, they just can't stop people. And 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 that's that's bad news when you got an offense led by Teddy Teddy Ruffner coming coming to your place. I'm picking Mars in a runaway, 42 to seven. Mars wins uh, wins that game. Emma's not impressed with this show. She's so not impressed. No, she's not no, impressed not at all. Well, I, I guess you, you could call it our big showdown of the week. Uh, the Freeport Yellow Jackets. They are three and one. The the, the Ben Lane running Jackets here. Uh, couldn't play a couple of games earlier this year because of the COVID-19 situation, but they're back playing now. They're three and one nice win last week over Burrow. They, they head to unbeaten North Catholic and the, the, the bully of Butler County up they call the Trojans there, but they're blowing on everybody. Mike, we'll start with you on this one since you, you'll be covering this game. How do you see Freeport North Catholic? What it was, like I said earlier, what a fun matchup. Uh, Joey Prentice and Ben Lane going at it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this, but like I, like I said, I think North Catholic has a little bit too much in a tank compared to Freeport. I think Ben Lane and Freeport are going to make a nice showing of this, but I think North Catholic's going to, going to hang on and win uh, 28-21. Derek, what do you think? Uh, Yellow Jackets, Trojans. The least amount of points North Catholic has scored in a game this year is 35. Yep. And win over East Allegheny earlier this year. I think they put up another 35 in this game. And that, Hey, 35 points against North Catholic is actually – you're doing some good things on defense because they're averaging over 50 points a game. Yep. But I just don't think uh, Freeport's offense, which has been really good with Ben Lane at quarterback, but they're going up against a really stout, really good, real, really physical and really fast North Catholic defense. I'd like the Trojans to win this game 35-16. to 16. Like I said earlier, I think it's going to be a wild game. I think there's going to be plenty of points, and I've, I'm also going with North Catholic, and I'm going 38-27. to 27. I think Freeport finds the end zone against them a few times, but not enough to, to, to hang with that North Catholic offense. All right, let's go with uh, Punch to Tawny. The, the, the Chucks, uh, much like Mock, having a rough time of it, 0-6. We're coming down to Montauk, which is also struggle, but Montauk 1-5, their only win of the year is a 21-14 win at Punch to Tawny. Mike, we'll throw it to you on, the, on this one. Do, do the Warriors make it a, a sweep of the Chucks this year? Yeah, I think they do. Uh, they played Kern City pretty tough uh, last week. Their defense is really good, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they gave Kern City some trouble. But the problem with Monta is they're so one-dimensional. They have not been able to find a passing game at all. They can run the ball, though. Mason Mershimer and J.D. Dessina are quite a one-two punch when they get when they get going. So I, I think Monta will just grind this one out. Uh, they'll just wear down Punxy Pony with that running game. Uh, the key for Monta is they can't get behind the six. They can't get in third and long, so I don't think they will. I think they'll be able to uh, to push um, Pony around a little bit. Yeah, I don't think they will. So I think I think Monta wins. Uh, I'm gonna go with kind of twenty-two to eight. I think that it's gonna be that kind of game. All right, Derek Monta and Punxy. Who's your, who's your choice here? Covered the Du Bois Monotal game a few weeks ago. Monotal lost that game, but they, they played with heart. They played with effort. And from what Mike said, they did the same thing last week against Carn City. 
Um, Bob Rotman obviously isn't happy with the results this year, but he has to be happy with, with the effort he's seen. I don't think that effort changes this week. Uh, they beat Punxsutawney earlier this year, and I don't see uh, that I don't see Punxsutawney getting any revenge here. Twenty-four to seven Warriors. Yeah, I would agree. I, th- I think I think uh, Montauk's Montauk's offense has struggled to score points this year. They haven't scored more than twenty-one in any game this year. I think they do break that this week. I pick Montauk to defeat Punxsutawney twenty-six to twelve. Would be my <laughs> score. And we will close our. Pick segment with uh, we've got a, a couple of uh, playoff games this week. Uh, the District Nine starting kind of a week above uh, or earlier, I should say, than everybody else. Mike, we'll start with you in this first one. It's a rematch of a wild game played at Deal Stadium in Carn City a couple weeks back. The Carn City Gremlins four and two will play Central Clarion five and one. Central Clarion, of course, winning that first matchup forty three to forty one with a strong fourth quarter. As of this taping, we do not know where this game will be played at, but they will definitely be playing it on Friday. How do you see the rematch here, Mike? Well, uh, Kern City early was in control for three quarters of that game. Uh, Central Clarion scored four touchdowns in, in the fourth quarter. Really, the key was that two-point conversion they got along the way, which kind of made uh, Kern City have to uh, try to chase that point, and they had to chase it at the end. They didn't get the two-point conversion. They lost by two. This is going to be a whale of a game again. Uh, I see Kern City winning this one. I think they learned uh, – from their mistakes uh, in the fourth quarter uh, a couple weeks ago when they lost to uh, Central Clarion. Uh, I think they're going to correct that. But I know they've had trouble uh, containing uh, passing quarterbacks this season, and uh, obviously Central Clarion has a good one, but uh, I think Carnegie is going to shore that up this week and, and win uh, and move on in the playoffs. What do you have for a score there? Uh, I'm going to go – it's going to be high scoring. I'm going to go 35-28 Carnegie City <laughs> this time. So you just stole my score again. That's that's my score really? again. Yep, how yep. Do you, how do you keep doing this? I, I don't know. Yeah, since 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 we have the same score, I'll just make my comment on the game right here. Uh, yeah, I don't see either team really stopping the other one with with any kind of a regularity this week. Much much like their the matchup last time. Uh, Clarion loaded with weapons, both in in the running game as well as the pass game. Their offense starts with Cal German, sixteen hundred seventy one yards passing. 21 touchdowns, only five picks. He's a handful. But I think Corn City's offense, I think they're going to get it together, and I think they'll get a, a couple of, of stops when they have to get them late. I'm also picking Corn City. It's the same score as you, 35 to 28. Derek, what say you on uh, on this matchup? Well, the first game, Corn City was up 35 to 15 at one point in the second yep. half. I don't think they're able to build that kind of lead. In fact, I think Central Clarion is going to get an early lead. And it's going to put uh, more pressure on that Carn City passing game. Obviously, the, the strength of Carn City is that run game. I think it's going to put more pressure on the Carn City passing game. And I see this game uh, turning out, uh, at least result-wise, the same as the first. I don't see it being as close, though. I think Central Clarion wins 37-23. All right. And our other playoff game involves the uh, Falcon Knights of Union, AC Valley. They're hitting the road, uh, as is Carn City. But they are heading up to Smithport to play the Hubbers. Uh, one of my favorite nicknames around this, around this region. Uh, Smithport, 5-0. and uh, Union, Easy Valley, only only with the one loss so far. Derek, I'll throw it right back to you. How do you see this playoff game unfolding? It's easy to get caught up in the numbers with Smithport. They're 5-0. and They're averaging almost 300 yards rushing per game. But three of their wins are against Cameron County, Port Allegheny, and uh, Oswego Valley, and those two, those three teams have a combined record of two and eleven. One of their other wins is a fourteen nothing win against Caldersport. Caldersport's a good team. Obviously, kudos to uh, Smithport for winning that game. But I think it, it proves that when they go up against a good team, they're not able to put up those monster numbers, especially on the ground like they were against the weaker teams. Union AC is obviously a good team, and I might be going out on a limb here, uh, but I think Union AC goes up there. I think they're leaving on Wednesday to get to this Friday game. Um, I think Union AC goes up and they, they pull off what a lot of people would consider an upset, but I think it's going to happen. I got Union AC winning this game 28-24. Wow. Mike, how do, you, do, you, do you agree with Derek? Do the Falcon Knights go up there and score a road playoff win? No, I don't agree with them this time. Um, you know, Derek talks about their offense, but really it's Smithport's defense that's been kind of the driving force and dominant. Now, Smithport does have a running back, two running backs who are – they're kind of a two-headed running back show. The one running back line is averaging close to 10 yards a carry. Okay, they, they put up big points against uh, bad teams, but even when they played good teams, they shut out a pretty good uh, 
good team uh, there a few weeks ago, 14 nothing. I don't see Union AC Valley mounting enough offense in, in this game to get it done, especially on the road, that long road trip. Smithport's a really good team, 5-0, and we mentioned that, but they've only given up 18 points this whole year. Uh, I don't care who you're, who you're playing. You only give up 18 points in, in, in five games. You're a good defense. It's going to be really low scoring, though. But I, I see a 12-8 to eight Smithport win over Union AC Valley. Yeah, Smithport's got one of those quarterbacks who – there's a lot of these, these, these guys around who can run the ball and throw the ball. Their quarterbacks run for 677 yards. I think he's the one Mike Gabs in about 10 yards yeah. to carry. And Braden Johnson, they have another back who's got 596 yards and five touchdowns. Derek, your point is well, well taken. Their competition has not been great. But the, I'll tell you what, that 14 nothing win over Caldersport is an eye-opener for me. Caldersport entered that game averaging 49 points a game, and they got blanked by this team. Um, that's enough to, to sell me on Smithport. I'm also picking Smithport to, to, to win a close, very low-scoring game. I'm saying 14-7 to seven and how, Smithport, DP, Junior AC Valley. And how, how tough is Class A in, in District 9 yes. when AC Valley's 4-1? They're the four they're seed. They're basically a, a four seed, yep. and they have to go to Smithport. There's some really good football teams in single A. This, this is probably one of the more competitive uh, classes uh, in District 9. I think you'd probably say it is the most competitive class in District 9. Yeah, these two playoff games, I think, are going to be radically different in how they're played. I think we're going to have a, another Corn City Central Clarion shootout, and, and we're going to have a defensive tussle between uh, Smithport and Union ECV. There might be a lot of passes thrown in that Central Clarion Corn City game because Corn City's running game has kind of sputtered a little bit. But uh, Eric Boer has been been throwing the ball well, and we know Central Clarion can throw with their quarterback, uh, Germont. So uh, this is <laughs> – yeah, you're right. We can have a shootout and then a slobber knocker. Yep. We're going to have two very vastly different games in District well, 9 this week. Those are our playoff picks. We'll see how those pan out. And, uh, of course, we'll have the other playoff games coming up next week. Usually we go to another sport here, but I'm going to stay with football because of Scott Heinauer's uh, uh, milestone <laughs> win at Mars last week. Uh, Derek, my, my subject pertaining to that this week is – Will another county football coach ever approach that record of 200 wins at the same school in Butler County? How do you see this? How do you see Scott Heinauer's, uh, his achievement here in, in terms of history, not only in the past, but moving forward? I think, number one, for, for a guy to coach this many years at one school, I think coaches like Scott Heinauer are pretty much a dying breed. Uh, I mean, you think if you spend 20 years at one school, that's a long time, and to get the 200 wins, you have to average 10, year, 10 wins per year. I, I just don't see it happening. I think you could have cases where a coach gets maybe 100 wins at one school, moves on to another school. He might get 200 career victories uh, overall, but, but to get 200 wins at one school, man, I, 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 and you're talking about just the schools in our county, I don't see it happening again. Um, I just – Coaches don't coach that long at one school. That, and that's another thing that impresses me about Heinauer is you have to stay in the good graces of, of the right people, let's face it. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Because yep. if you get on the bad side of the right people, your, your coaching career can be cut short. And um, I, I just don't see it happening again. I think this is going to be the last time we see in our county one coach at one school, 200 win. It's pretty impressive. It, it's, it's incredible, it really is. Mike, your thoughts on on Heinauer's mark and uh, from a, from a, uh, when, when you look at it, uh, past history, future achievements, how how difficult is it going to be for someone in in the county to to to, to surpass what he's done at Mars? A Emma has a better chance to get the two hundred wins <laughs> than anybody else right now because, like Derek said, I know you and I talked about this a little bit mm. last night, John. No one's going to be able to stay at a school for that long again. Uh, to average 10 wins a season for 20 years to win 200, no one's going to be able to do it. It might be a very rare occurrence, but it, it, just the way we, the times we live in now, the, the way high school sports are, no one's going to be able to stick around long enough to do something like that, either through, like Derek said, get on the side of the wrong people or wanting to move on to another job, to another school district, to another challenge. I just don't see it happening again. I think John Gaylot is our longest tenure coach right now, other than Scott Heinauer, and I think it's like seven or eight years. Yep. So that just, that just shows you uh, how hard it is to stick around for that long at a school. We got storied football programs in this county that have had coaching turnover lately. So uh, I just don't see it happening again. 
Well, you look at uh, the, the Jack McCurry. You remember him down at North Hills? They 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 tried to uh, to push him out <laughs> despite incredible success. Same with Jim uh, Jim Render down at Upper uh, St. Clair. Same thing. Uh, that that Coach Alan Quippa. Same same thing happened there. I mean, you, you guys are right. Coaching not only in football but but in all sports all levels has totally changed. I mean, the, the longevity factor just isn't there anymore for so many reasons. So I, I agree with you two guys. Um, wherever Scott Heiner's win total winds up when he does call it quits, whether it's at the end of this year, next year, whenever it is, that, that, that record is going to stay there. It's going to be in granite. No one's going to break it. Yeah. And, and I think it, yeah, we're witnessing history right now. And I, you know, hopefully, and, I, and I'm sure they do, the people in the in the Mars area school district appreciate what what that guy's done there. The stability, as Derek mentioned, with the football program, what is it, sixteen straight playoff appearances, whatever it is. That's um, you know that's just crazy stuff. I'm, I mean, they they rarely rarely have a losing season there. Always consistent, same offense every year. Uh, just an outstanding program, and I and my hats off to the yeah, another in, in that coaching stuff. Another name, I can't – his name escapes me, but the Aliquippa coach, the long-time Aliquippa coach. Yeah, I mentioned him, yeah. Yeah, okay, he did. Yeah, he got he got pushed out too. So Like Mike Zemanic, yeah. is that his name, Derek? Zemanic, Mike Zemanic. Mike Zemanic, yeah. Mike yeah. Zemanic, yeah. Okay, well, that concludes our, our show for this week. As always, we thank thank everybody for, for checking us out. And uh, now check out Sunday's Butler Eagle for a recap of all the football action, playoffs around the corner. We'll be following that those as well. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.